I've never been on set where everything went exactly as we pictured it being. There's always something that goes wrong. The power goes out, an actor doesn't show up, equipment fails, it rains when it was supposed to be perfectly sunny, the client says, hey, we're gonna do this entire other thing instead, and there's not much you can do to prepare for these types of circumstances. Unless there is. What if there was a way that we could actually practice and gain the experience of being thrown into a situation that we have zero control in. I asked you guys on Facebook to tell me some stories about when you're thrown into a situation that you have absolutely no control and how you actually combat it. What do you do so that when things are outside of your control, you still are able to move forward and still be able to get everything done, get all the coverage that you want by the end of the day. How do you do that? And one of the most common answers was just you needed to get practice and experience so that you're able to stay calm and collective. Well, how do you get that experience? Well, you can go on set and screw up a whole bunch and be caught in situations that are stressful and that you have no control in, or you can actually simulate that experience. I just Googled random character generator and I got some really weird results. Carlos Peterson is a 100 year old photographer who is angry about global warming. On Wednesdays, he likes to kill bad guys. There's also Luna Knight, a rich man from the Philippines who can only be seen whilst balancing a ferret on his head. He's particularly good at crossword puzzles. His purpose in life is to prevent the apocalypse. So those are just a couple examples of some stuff that popped up just now. But when we did this exercise a couple weeks ago, we got a character that is really interesting. Oh, okay, this this, this looks promising. This looks okay, promising. Okay, okay. A 77 year old author whose name is Jeff Turner, who is angry about his favorite TV show getting canceled. Okay. He looks exhausted. He always carries a walking stick and has been wrongly accused of robbing a bank. This is the one. Sir, I just gotta tell you that I did not rob no bank and I am ticked off that my show has been canceled. So that's the foundation, that's the character, and that's kind of the scenario that he's put in. And we have to tell his story through our resources and through what we have around here. Not only that, we had 45 minutes to capture all the footage. What I gathered on that date was the only footage that I was allowed to use. I wasn't able to go into my previous libraries or my previous banks. That would have been extremely helpful, but I didn't want to cheat. I wanted to show you guys that you can pull off a scene like this when you're just flying by the seat of your pants. And I learned a ton from this experiment. But before I get into all the things that I learned and the things that I think I could have improved on and what I would have done differently, um, let's first actually watch that film. <clears throat> Day 34 on the run for a crime I did not commit. How long will I be on the run? Well, I'm 77, maybe not on the run. How long will I be on the brisk walk? <sighs> Worst part is, is that because I robbed that bank, they canceled my favorite show, Gilmore Girls. I've never even used a bank. I keep all my money in a pillowcase underneath my, my bed. Now the world is my bed. How long will I be here? How long will this be my cross to bear? <sighs> Only time will tell, and hopefully time will tell the story of a man wrongly accused for a crime he didn't commit. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that scene that we put together. Feel free to leave a comment down below with your thoughts on it. Is it my best work? Absolutely not. But by doing these exercises, you get more comfortable on set, especially when there are times that are stressful. You're much more equipped to be able to handle those sort of situations if you're practicing. But let's go over some of those lessons that I learned through this experiment. Number one is to be quick, but don't rush. For a long time, I thought that being quick and rushing were the same thing, but they're really not. Because we are on a deadline, because I set myself up with that 45 minute limitation, yeah, I had to be quick. I couldn't dilly-dally. I had to move forward and be efficient with my time and smart with my time. But you shouldn't rush the creative process and you shouldn't rush the specific tasks that you might need to do. Because when you rush and you don't take the time to do things the proper way, you make mistakes. You forget about things and then you have to go and fix those mistakes, which inevitably takes up more time than if you just did it right the first time. A great example of this is right at the beginning when we're just setting up the lights. I had that huge softbox. That softbox takes a couple minutes to be able to set up. You need 
need to put those pins inside of the Bowens mount and then mount the Bowens mount up to the light. I was not taking my time and doing things right the first time. I was rushing and I was making mistakes. I put the Bowens mount on upside down, not upside down, backwards. I mounted the Bowens mount inside of the light dome itself. So I couldn't actually mount that accessory onto the light. If I quickly checked that I was doing the job properly, then I wouldn't have to do the job twice. So even though you need to be quick and you need to be efficient, don't rush the process. Don't be sloppy and make sure that you're doing things right the first time. Tip number two is to communicate well with your team. Now for myself, when I get stressed, I don't communicate that well at all. I start having all these blahs and blahs. I start stuttering a whole bunch and it, it's really challenging and really difficult for me. That's why I just needed to take a moment and just breathe a little bit and relax because I was so stressed that I wasn't able to properly communicate. And even though I wasted a minute, I didn't actually waste that time. See, if I didn't take that minute to relax, I would have spent a lot more time trying to articulate my thoughts and trying to fight over all this clutter that I had in my brain. And communicating with your team will save you a lot of time because you're all on the same page, you all have the same vision, and so everyone's able to do their part. And if it's a well-oiled machine where everything is operating smoothly and efficiently together, then no one is wasting time undoing someone else's stuff or doing something that doesn't actually matter or is less important than another task that needs to be done. So by having a good team unit, it and by communicating and by operating efficiently, you're going to find that the project is moving much more smoothly than before. And I got to know Steven a little bit more and I was able to understand his limitations and he was able to understand how I communicated or how I didn't communicate. So we were better equipped to handle the job that we were trying to do. Number three is coverage. The more coverage that you can get, the more footage you can gather, the better. Now at the very beginning, ideally, I would have started off the scene showing where our character was located, maybe showing a wide shot of him in his environment, maybe actually going outside and filming the barn or the shed that he was in, but I just forgot. I didn't get that footage, I didn't think about it, so the film was not as good as it could have been. However, I was smart enough to gather the footage of the inside of the barn and certain little details, things like spider webs, things like the rope hanging down and the floorboards. And this kind of footage really helped me when maybe my camera was too shaky or maybe James did something weird that I didn't like. So I was able to cut to these certain clips that added to the scene and gave more context to where he was. Something that's universal, something that you can use anywhere in your edit at any time. Maybe a close up of a character's hands or his props or something along those lines. So you don't have to only use the coverage of when he's speaking. You can add these types of clips anywhere along your timeline as long as it fits in well enough with what he's saying and it doesn't kill the pacing. And make sure you have as many options as possible. You wanna get a diverse selection of footage. That's going to help you so much while you're editing. Tip number four is to focus in on your story. By remembering to focus in on your story, it's giving you a little bit more of a format, a beginning, middle, and end to your piece and try to build on the conflict and build on the tension that your characters are in. That inner conflict, that inner turmoil that your characters are facing. This is going to help you immensely while you're trying to build your characters or your setting. Story is always king, it always will be. And so by following this structure, by following this plan, you're already thinking of the edit that you're going to be creating. Make sure that when you're filming, you have something that is able to be used as a beginning, middle, and end. Because if you're missing out on one of those key plot points, then your entire story, your entire piece of art is going to feel imbalanced. It's not going to be as fulfilled as it should be. In this film that we shot, I didn't actually think of a proper ending. I didn't think of a way that we were able to conclude this scene. James just finished his monologue, so we cut the camera and that was it. So later on, when I had to piece together the edit, it felt incomplete. So that's why I added the overlay of the crime scene and I added the sound effects of the police sirens and that made a, an ending kind of, but how much more powerful would it have been if I would have actually had my production assistant, Steven, outside of this barn and use a red and a blue light to simulate the sirens. That would have built up tension. That would have looked way better and way more professional and would have made the ending feel a lot more rounded, a lot more complete than what we finally had here. Because I don't think that we really communicated that he was apprehended or that those police sirens were directly outside of his door. Those police sirens could have been coming from anywhere. If I would have actually added practical elements, practical lights that were simulating police sirens and police lights, that would have been so much better than just slapping on stock footage. So make sure you're focusing on your story and make sure you have a clear picture of what your beginning, middle, and end are going to be. My last tip is to constantly have a positive attitude. The reason that I say this is because your entire team is looking at you and 
there's this really interesting thing where you have one person who has a really bad mood or is really stressed, then the entire group starts to get stressed. Everyone starts to eat off each other's energy. So you wanna make sure that you are positive, that you are in a good mood, and that you are a good example to your team or even if you are not in charge of the team, that you are a good member of the team and that you are combating those fits of rage or moments of anger or, or stress. You wanna be positive and you wanna continually be helpful. There's nothing that's going to completely ruin a shoot more so than if you lose it, if you snap at someone or if you go crazy and you get really angry because that kills the experience. It kills the creative process and it hurts your team and it hurts your reputation as a leader. So don't be that guy that pisses everybody off, but also don't create an environment where that type of person is encouraged. Encourage your team, tell them what a good job they're doing because then they're going to be enjoying themselves and they're gonna to wanna to come back, which that in itself is a wonderful thing but it's also just more fun. Do everything you can to combat that negativity. Feed your crew, tell them what a good job they're doing, and make sure that you keep a clear head and not snap at anybody. But anyway, guys, those are just some of my tips and suggestions for when things go wrong on set. Feel free to leave a comment down below on some of the stories or some of the experiences that you've had when you're on set and things aren't going quite as planned. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you're getting those notifications. You know, do all that jazz. And I will see you next time. Take care. And I have my friends here, Steven and... What up? Um, Jay. <laughs> I forgot the name. I love you, buddy. <laughs> Are you sure about that? I was on a roll. I was doing good. <laughs> so we have my two friends here, James and his... Uh... I do a lot of... Retakes? Retakes. So... I know I can see that. Yeah, yeah thank okay. you. We got this. All right. Here we go. So we have my friend Steven and James here. James is uh, wanting to become an actor at some point. So, at some point? <laughs> at some point? <laughs> so, uh, never. James when okay. the mood hits. <laughs> when the mood hits. Hello, my name's Steven. I'm, um, I'm James. Um, yeah, so here we are today. We're trying to do some improv. Yeah. I'm mom. <laughs> Hi, Leslie. Um, all right. <laughs>